Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. For today's video, I wanted to give you a quick tour of the garden so you can see how the garden is doing both here in the greenhouse and behind me out in the actual garden. Um, if you've watched my previous videos, you know this is my first time ever trying the Mitlighter garden method and I'm pretty excited about it. It's going really, really well so far. Um, and for those of you that are unfamiliar with the Mitlighter garden, uh, Jacob Mitleiter, he was a, a man that spent the last 20-30 years or so of his life traveling all over the world. He was a scientist and particularly I think he was uh, uh, dealt with plants and uh, growing different kinds of, if I remember right, flowers. I can't really remember. But, but anyway, um, the last 20 to 30 years of his life, he, he wanted to develop uh, a method that would work in any type of soil um, people anywhere in the world, third world countries or wherever could produce um, more, pr more actual food in less space and more nutritious food. From a, an emergency preparedness standpoint, this method really excites me. Uh, my friend from David from LDS Prepper, when they did side-by-side -side comparisons and his wife was an expert uh, organic gardener, um, the Mitlighter method produced six times as much food with the same amount of, of, of space and at a massively less expense. Um, and what excites me about this also from an emergency preparedness standpoint um, is the fact that you can store all of the amendments, all of the uh, what they call the weekly feed and the, and the pre-plant mead, the, the fertilizers for this garden in just a small corner in your garage you can uh, you can store five ten years doesn't take up very much space you compare that with all the manures and normal amendments you would have from a garden yeah, that's it that's a huge deal uh, in my book and by the way if you're interested in learning more about the Mitlighter garden method I'll put a link below this video in case that's helpful um, as to where you can get the Mitlighter Garden book. It is an affiliate link, so if that bothers anybody, you can always go on Google and, and search for it that way. So let's get going. Let's look at the garden, and then after that, uh, if you hang around, I'll give you a quick update on, on the rabbits and the quail and so forth. Okay, let's just start right here in the greenhouse since we're here. Um, you can see I've got, uh, on this side of the bed, I've got a row of carrots. I need to thin those. And then I've got some some lettuce. We've already been snacking on that and then some other types of lettuce I've already eaten that and that's growing back and then we've got some green onions down there at the end Obviously, we got tomatoes in the back along the back row. I've got some squash um, Squash there and then squash there and I've got some uh, cucumbers and then um, some watermelon. I'm not sure if that one there is is cute it's cucumber or watermelon. I had another plant here and another plant or two here uh, that were sprouted and starting to grow and somebody was helping me thought they were a weed and picked them out so I've got to replant the watermelon. I'm, I may not even worry about watermelon this year because I know they have a long growth cycle. In hindsight I should have planted the carrots and the lettuce um, after the squash and everything got a good start um if those plants would have been nice and big and everything then i could have planted you know some carrots along the end i think they're kind of making it hard on the the little uh cantaloupe and squash plants that haven't gotten very big yet because they're shading it maybe when i thin that out, thin those out that'll help um over here i've got strawberries i think i saw these are um plants that um, I planted from roots and uh, I thought I saw a little strawberry yeah there's a strawberry growing there I was told I wouldn't get any strawberries this year um, that they would start later but I've got one or two that looks like they're coming then here we've got some beets I've been snacking on those as greens if you've never tried beet greens man they're good they, they fit in a salad they're not it's not like eating lettuce they're good like spinach in a smoothie too um, so I've been picking those, trying not to pick too much where I hurt the plant any, uh, but they're just so tasty that I've been doing those and, put them in, and putting them in smoothies. 
Here I've got some peppers, like the tomatoes. I've also got some tomatoes growing, as you can see, starting on there. Lots of flowers. Um, these, the tomatoes and the peppers, I bought um, since I didn't uh, start seeds myself here. Didn't have my seedling table or set up yet. I bought these from a nursery, these peppers and the tomatoes. So those are going. Okay, so let's go outside. Okay, so here's the garden gate. Now I'm having some problems with some pests. If anybody watching this video is a better gardener than me and knows what to do about pests, um, these particular plants haven't done very good. They're getting eaten by bugs, and I, anyway, I'm not quite sure what the problem is with those. If you can see here, some of my, uh, these are pole beans. You can see some of those are getting eaten by pests. <clears throat> I'm open to suggestions. I know there's some organic things you can do to, uh, to spray for those. Um, but anyway, and then here's a bunch of, uh, I believe this is acorn squash if I remember correctly and then uh, I might have I can't remember if I have cantaloupe anyway if you watch one of my earlier videos where I had the diagram I, I told what everything was then here's some tomatoes also that I you can see I've got some tomatoes starting to grow there uh, these are tomato plants again that I bought from the nursery and then the corn's coming up pretty good and by the way the date uh, today is July 7th, in case you're wondering. Uh, we don't get our last day of frost here until the 29th of May. So we get a little late start in the garden out, out here. Um, so anyway, these are <coughs> sweet peas, I believe. They're kind of a bush variety, so I'm not going to be uh, tying them up like I am the tomatoes. And then uh, <coughs> over here... Uh, these are more peppers, and these are spinach. We've got spinach growing, and here's onions. Half of these onions are red, and the other half are white. And then down here, I've got some beets. So this last row is potatoes. You can see they're doing really, really good. If you, as you can tell, I, I do have a pest that's eating through some of those. So again, if you have any tips for me on an organic uh, spray that I or something that I can do to get rid of those pests, that'd be awesome. And then back there is that bed that I, that was already there that uh, my wife didn't want me to move, but it's awfully close to the to this row. But that that row is uh, those are raspberry bushes. Now, if you look down here, you can see. Uh, some little bits of grass and weeds that are growing up. Um, originally, what I was doing was pushing the bark out of the way and putting a layer of paper down to cover up the few places where there were weeds. But I think the, the butcher paper that I used, I probably should have used two layers of it, is starting to dis disintegrate. So I'm starting to get more and more weeds popping up. And so a friend of mine who has done a lot of gardening he gave me a, a tip and that is I'll do a video on this in the specifically in the future but I'll just mention it now you mix a, a gallon of, of uh, I just use white vinegar and about you know 10 ounces to a pound of, of salt uh, the salt and the vinegar will kill the weeds and then just to make sure that the the solution sticks on the plants use about a quarter cup of Dawn, just regular uh, non-scented Dawn dish soap. And I just pour that all in and my, my sprayer and I should have filmed it. Anyway, I'll, I'll film it in, uh, I'll do another video where I show you how well it works, but it just knocks them out faster than the poisons you buy at the big box store. And it's, it's organic. Uh, and I didn't want to use the poisons in here since I've, you know, got a garden. Plus, all that stuff sinks down to the water table. Um, but this is organic, and it just kills them really fast. I ha am having some growing back, but it's no big deal. Just every time, I'll just knock them, and I'll just hit them with that stuff. And 
eventually hopefully they'll they'll quit growing but i really like that solution okay well let's uh let's head out here to the uh we'll do a quick update on the rabbits and the quail chickens are doing fine And so there's a chicken coop and I don't have anything in this uh, first quail hutch here at the moment right here I have these quail um, they've been laying really really good they're just like a chicken man they lay an egg a day as long as they have enough light um, but anyway, you can see those guys. And if you've watched my video, you know I have an automatic watering system that waters the rabbits, both quail hutches and the chicken coop. That thing is so awesome. In the summer, they drink more, so I have to, you know, fill it up every couple of weeks. I don't ever like it to get below half full. <clears throat> but, um,. In the summer, it's just gravity feed because uh, um, it, the circulation pump only turns on when it's below 40 degrees. But in the winter, the water's always moving through there. So anyway, uh, I sold the little uh, white and gray uh, standard Rex doe that I have. This is her sister here. Um, this little beautiful little girl here. Um, her fur still a little bit roughed up from when her babies, I left her with her babies for a while and they were crawling all over her. But anyway, I think eventually I'm going to save her and I'll show you, I mean, uh, sell her too, even though she's such a good little mama. I really like her. Mainly the reason I'm thinking about selling her is because her babies, these guys are all full grown and they're all super sweet. Um, but they're, uh, they're all five pounds now. They're ready to uh, to uh, be processed. Go to freezer camp. Hi guys. Hi. Um, there's twelve of them in there. Half of them are the the uh, white and gray standard Rex doe that I told you about, and the other half are uh, this little girl here, her her kits. And then over here, you can see. Hi, mama. Here's the mama here. Um, and then her little babies and these guys are about a week behind the other ones they're actually pretty much to wait too already uh, they're weak behind age wise not weight wise sure I, what I've learned is uh, her probably because she's bigger um, but her uh, babies get to wait about a week or two quicker I think about two weeks quicker actually and then then this little girl's uh, uh, babies so these guys are to wait now but they're a couple of weeks older than these guys and they weigh about the same so that's the reason hey buddy my little buck how you doing bud <laughs> he's like uh, give me a treat I want a treat anyway but this little girl here is the out of the first batch that I got out of this black New, uh, New Zealand uh, doe. This is her daughter, and I processed all of her siblings, but I think I'm going to keep her as a doe to replace the red one because uh, her mom's babies, uh, like I said, are grow a week or two I get to wait a week or two ahead and so I'm hoping she'll do the same but right now um, I probably in hindsight shouldn't have had her bred because now I got to wait uh, but that'll work out because she's bred right now on the 14th of July is when I got to put in the nest box both for her and for this black New Zealand um, they're they both get nest boxes on the 14th um, and then I got to wait six weeks or so for their babies to grow up after that before uh, before um, I can sell her. Um, but that that'll 
uh, she's not quite old enough anyway, so that'll be good to let her grow up. I'm not going to breed her till she's six, seven months probably. So, okay, well that's the update of the rabbits and the quail. Chickens, they just are happy to be here. They love free ranging. We didn't pick our, uh, we didn't pick our uh, rhubarb in time and the chickens have kind of destroyed it. So I don't think we're going to worry about picking the rhubarb this year, but we'll I put a fence up around it or do something different next year so that um, and get on it faster uh, at picking it. So Kay over here with the bees, um, you can see that I've I've got two um, two honey supers on top of this is my original hive. I've got one honey super on top of this uh, new hive that I split off of this hive. Um, bees are it's warming up enough. The bees are starting to go to town here. And where I'm standing, I'm right in their path. It's funny, if I stand here and look at them, sometimes I get hit in the back of the head by a bee coming back. Never had anybody sting me, though. But, uh, oh, there's the checker partridges. Let me show you. These are wild checker partridges. <laughs> I don't know if you can see them. Whoops, there you go. See those checkers? Now they're, they're scared of me, so they're running off. Let's see if I can zoom in where you can see them a little better. Anyway, they just kind of come and go as you please in the yard. It's funny. Eventually we're going to move this wood pile. Let me zoom back out to normal. There's the checker partridges are all running. But anyway, they sleep right on the top of this uh, second uh, stack of wood right there. It's kind of funny. Uh, we see them at night. They sleep right there. Okay, well, I hope that was interesting. I hope you got some benefit out of this video. Uh, if you did, please don't forget to like the video. That helps with the Google algorithm, and especially share this on your social media. That helps us uh, to grow the channel. And again, we appreciate you watching it all the way to the end. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you in the next video.